Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to talk about more God Strike, specifically the passives that are available in the game. There are a lot of passives in God Strike, and therefore there are a lot of different combinations that you can employ to get different results. So today we're going to walk through each passive, let you know what it does, give you little hints and um, how to's on how to get the most out of it, and give you some direction into what you should aim for in your builds with passives. So if you're looking for a comprehensive guide on the passives in God Strike, stick with me and you will get it. Okay, so the first passive we're going to look at is Reaper. Forces enemies to drop more souls. Reaper is fantastic for, as the description mentions, building souls quickly. If your passives are not set up to heavily augment your normal attack, and you're focused more on your setups with getting damage off through active skills, rather than utility, then Reaper is the way to go. It works well in these setups, and accelerates the weight in which you can pull off damage, and that's good. Alright, works less well in normal attack setups, but it can be used to spam your utility if you need that evasion. Pair it with things like Void, Twin Souls and Soul Burst for the best results. Number 2 is Faster Than Light, and that just raises Talal's move speed, that's it. Evasion is everything in God Strike, and most bullet hell games. Being able to evade the projectiles that a boss throws out is the key to preserving the health and timer bar. No health, no time, no win. It's as simple as that. As such, it's always nice to spec Talal with just as much utility and evasion as you get damage. That's where Faster Than Light comes in. Nothing need be done to activate Faster Than Light and it just increases your base move speed. It does require some practice becoming used to the change in pace, getting your rhythm down in coordination with boss activity, but once that's done, Faster Than Light can quickly become a God Strike favorite. It pairs well with things like Untouchable, Void, and Soul Burst. Next is Thorn Shield. When a projectile damages Talal, it is deflected back towards the enemy. Look, sometimes no matter how well you play or how hard you try, you just can't avoid taking damage. That's where Thorn Shield is handy. It takes those movements where unavoidable damage happens and turns them against your enemy. Naturally, this doesn't mean you should go looking for damage, but you're willing to fight the boss with your last chance HP, then go for that. However, it can be useful in those builds, specifically those builds. I wouldn't recommend it unless you're an experienced player, but what Thorn Shield is better used for is making the best out of a bad situation in God Strike. It's not going to be active as some of your other passives like Fast and Align, which is permanent, but it's a silver lining passive instead. Combine it with things like Final Spark, Thick Skin, Frostbite, and you'll be going well. Number 4 is Heavy Artillery. Projectile range is decreased, but damage is increased. This line of passive works much the opposite of the soul builds. It's all about using your trigger shots rather than building souls and relying on actives. You might be concerned with positioning whilst using heavy artillery, and yes, it does mean that you're closer to the enemy and you're more susceptible to projectiles, but you can offset this in a few ways to ensure you're not paying too much of a hefty price. The first method is taking pa passives that extend the, the range of your right trigger attack, offsetting the range decrease, like from Heavy Artillery. The second is combining it with passives that increase standing still damage. Focus on evasion until you're safe, then just get in some shotgun shots at the boss. The third is practice with Heavy Artillery. The best way to employ it is just to practice and get better with it. Then the range limitation is just your normal. It pairs well with things like Turret, Sharpshooter, and Rapid Fire. Fifth is Void. Souls are slightly attracted towards Talal. The slightly mentioned in the ability description means slightly. Don't expect to be several like Talal lengths away from your next soul and still picking up. It's no huge vacuum. But with that said, it can sometimes be the difference between grabbing a soul that is near a projectile and missing it. Obviously Void pairs well with builds that are centered not so much around your trigger damage but for getting abilities off as much as possible. It can be used for strict utility actives. Um, and a base damage build, but you know, it works better in combination with damaging skills thrown in the mix as well. Combine it well with Reaper, Twin Souls, and Soul Burst. Next is Final Spark. When there are less than 60 seconds left in the timer, Talal gains a boost in damage. As the name suggests, Final Spark just sort of helps you get across the line, and it's a key passive in the last ditch God Strike builds. Your time won't expire when the timer ends, without Talal getting hit, so grab Final Spark and some evasion skills and build heavily in base damage for an extremely potent HD Melter. Obviously this isn't without risk, like 
Whilst it can be a really effective way to finish off a boss, it doesn't mean it's easy. These builds only work if you have evasion in the pattern, or you know the boss you're facing really well, and you're excellent at that evasion. One hit means it's all over. So if you're confident, final spark it up. Pair it with things like Faster Than Light, Trinity, and Spiked Boy. Number seven is Follower. Talal is followed by an arcane companion that will help shooting down the enemy. Like if you don't want to feel lonely and you like having the sprites follow you around that'll absorb damage, take projectiles and put a hurt on, Follower is a must in those sort of zoo setups. Elsewise, if you have a free slot, uh, free slot in the build you're working on, uh, and you're not sure which way it's gonna go or what to include, just throw a follow in there and give it a go. Its accuracy is always gonna be better than yours, and it will let you focus more on evasion than dishing out the hurt. Follow is a great passive for newer players because they don't have to focus on two things at once. Just learn the patterns, evade well, and let the damage come. It pairs well with things like Crystal Armor, Trinity, and Spiked Boy. Number eight is Thick Skin, reduces all incoming damage. Look, like I mentioned a bit earlier, sometimes taking damage is unavoidable. No matter how good you are, it's unavoidable. So this helps with that. And if you're learning how to play bullet hell games through God Strike, this can make the game much more forgiving. The less damage you're taking, the more time you can you have to spend getting the boss down. Look, even if you're experienced and you just want to mitigate the damage in the longer boss fights, some of the three plus, four plus minute boss fights, Thick Skin is a great passive to take in those. It means that you're given more time to deal with the boss, and any mistakes that you make are much less punishing. Mixed in with passive that return damage or gain a buff on damage, Thick Skin can provide a lot of utility. So pair it with things like Thorn Shield, Crystal Armor, and Frostbite. Number nine is Twin Souls. Enemies can drop a Twin Soul that counts two towards your ability charges. Uh, I found the consistency of Twin Souls, Twin Souls, sorry to be rather generous. Uh, it doesn't exactly equal that you're getting double the amount of souls, but it does improve your soul economy a lot. As such, if you're going to be running uh, a build with twin passive as your focus, ensure that you're grabbing other soul passives as well. With the actives, you always want a good mix of damage and utility, but when selecting your actives, you should be aware that ones that you might not consider because of their heavy cost are now more viable because you're getting better soul economy. You know, you can get off a stasis blast with one soul pickup, so that's pretty good. Uh, pairs well with things like Reaper, uh, Void, and Soul Burst as well. All the soul ones. Number 10 is Crystal Armor. Talal is immune to the first impact. Pretty straightforward. Just makes your first instance of unavoidable damage or mistake not count. Sounds pretty good. And it is. You just straight up avoid having that chunk of your timer health taken. Can become less and less useful as you get better at the game in some fights, but in others where it's unavoidable, Crystal Armor is just handy. There isn't much more to say, it just fits quite well in pretty much all builds. If you're three slotted and you're unsure what to take as last, don't have a huge priority in the last, consider just taking Crystal Armor for the longevity. It's never really wrong in any situation. Pair it with things like Untouchable, Speed Blast, uh, Trinity for the best results. Speaking of Trinity, that's our number 11. Three en energy balls, sorry, uh, orbit to lull and get destroyed once an enemy projectile hits them. Trinity's awesome. Yeah, it does extend your hitbox and sometimes you'll lose the sprites in unavoidable situations, but where it shines is that they will protect you outside of those situations, wherein a projectile was going to hit you or go through you and deal damage, but Trinity spin blocks it. So yeah, you might lose some of them through no fault of your own, but they also might save your bacon and keep you around longer in fights. If you're allowed, if you're around longer, you're dealing more damage, the better chance you have of getting the win, and that's literally the whole point of God Strike. So pair it with things like Spike Boy, Follower, and Turret for the best results. Uh, Spike Boy is also our number 12. A large orb tape, uh, a large orb rotates around Talal, absorbing any projectile that hits it. Not only does Spike Boy have one of the best passive names in God Strike, he's also one of the more useful. He's very similar to Trinity, except much larger and everlasting. This means that you can have him clear projectiles, and if time well enough, take damage for you wherein you had no other choice. Clearing and saving is a lot of utility in just one single passive. Pair him with things that uh, reduce damage or reduce the likelihood that you'll take damage for the ultimate tanking setup. Or use Spike Boy as your shield whilst you set up non-movement damage dealing builds. He's got a lot of utility, 
and he can make his way into a lot of uh, a lot of different builds, a lot of very high range. Uh, pairs well with things like turret, trinity, and crystal armor. Number 13 is untouchable. Damage is increased until Talar gets hit. It's pretty straightforward, and the damage bonus is really good. Obviously, once you take damage, it's useless, it doesn't do anything, and it takes up a passive slot. So if you want to take that damage boost through an entire God Strike boss fight, good luck, but build around evasion and negating the first hit with armor and sprites, and you'll go a long way. Another option rather than building for evasion and damage negating is to use Untouchable as a shotgun. Spec heavily for damage, including range reduction and standstill damage, and just get off as much as possible for, like, to the boss before Untouchable breaks. It pairs well with things like Crystal Armor, Faster Than Light, and Trinity. 14 is Frostbite. Time is slowed when Talal gets hit with a 10 second cooldown. Coincidentally, the name is Frostbite, and the passive prevents snowballing, both cold related. I think I'm funny. Well, what Frostbite does is it prevents an initiate <laughs> point of damage turning into many points of damage. Yes, it's on a cooldown, and yes, you still take the initial point of damage, but with the time slow, you can use that to evade the projectiles you would have otherwise taken. So that's when you pick up Frostbite. It's the God Strike Bacon Saver. You can use it instead of your tanking skills or in combination with them. However, if you're tanking Frostbite, you might find that you're tanking too long to finish your boss damage-wise, so maybe don't take both Frostbite and tanking skills, just one or the other. Uh, it'll pair well with things like Turret, Faster Than Light, and Thorn Shield. Speaking of Turret, it is number 15. Increases Talal's damage whilst standing still. The damage buff is pretty big, it's pretty good. If you combine it with other sources of increased base damage, like that your trigger does, you can melt HP bars really quickly, especially combined with skills that are active skills that augment your trigger damage. Obviously, this, this means you're standing still, and that's where the issue arrives. You want damage to make the best of turrets buffs, but you need utility to ensure that you're not getting melted whilst you're trying to do your own damage. My suggestion would be to maybe take the utility in the actives and the damage in the passives to balance them out. Use blink in your actives rather than specking for utility and passives. It pairs well with things like uh, heavy artillery, speed blast, and rapid fire. 16 is sands of time. Begin with an extra 30 seconds. It's a pretty useful utility passive. In a game where your health bar and the timer are 1, and you get punished heavily for making mistakes, 30 extra seconds is a huge advantage. Say you're struggling with a specific boss, you've taken a few cracks at it, you can't quite figure out what build is going to take you to the win. That's where Sands of Time comes in. You can throw it in almost any build, and it's a little leg up. It's a little cream on top that'll help you get there. The difficulty is not whether to choose Sands of Time or not, the difficulty is choosing what passive you're going to leave out to include it. It pairs well with things like Crystal Armor, Thick Skin, and Thorn Shield. Next is Soul Burst, and that is number 17. Talal's speed increases when picking up souls. It's good for a lot of the same reasons the Faster Than Light is. It's really potent in util it's a it's a really potent utility in soul setups. I wouldn't recommend it taking it if you're not building for soul setups with the rest of your passives and actives, because then the bonus you're getting it's pretty few and far between. But in soul builds, it's pretty much a must. With the passives that generate more soul economy, have soul pools towards you, soul actives, you can be literally littering the back battlefield with souls everywhere. And therefore, you're given many, many opportunities to use soul bursts as a utility or a save. Pairs well with things like Reaper, Void, and obviously Twin Souls. Number 18, Sharpshooter. Range is increased, but rate of fire is lowered. It is lowered a lot. It can be mitigated by rapid fire, it's a simple two passive setup build that allows you to evade projectiles at length, and you can still do pretty good damage. It can even be combined to offset the range loss when using heavy artillery. You won't be getting the extra range, you just don't lose any from the heavy artillery debuff. Elsewise, if you're not going for a trigger damage build, this can also find its way into soul builds, strangely enough. Um, many of the abilities in the active for soul builds require you pretty close to foes, and when you can't, you're doing not that much damage. So, Sharpshooter helps you deal consistent damage from afar whilst you're waiting for the souls to build up and get close. Pairs well with things like Rapid Fire, Heavy Artillery, and of course, Turret. Second to last is Rapid Fire, that's number 19. It's pretty simple, Rate of Fire is increased. 
does exactly as the name suggests. But don't think you always need to use rapid fire as a reaction to having a um, rate of fire reduction in your passives. It, it works fine just by itself to give you a little bit of extra damage boost. It can work in trigger damage build setup, sure, but don't think you need to limit yourself to those. It works equally well in soul setups because the more times you're damaging the boss with individual attacks, rather than like more damage, you've got more attacks, the more times that you can potentially get a soul to drop. Without either of those, it just works well to eat the HP bar. It's pretty much any setup you can think of it goes well in. You just have to find room for it. it pairs well things like Sharpshooter, Twin Souls, um, and Heavy Artillery would be good. Bee Blast is number 20, and it is the final passive in God Strike. After standing still, Talal is granted a movement speed bonus. So you stand still for a little bit, and then you zip real quick to your next destination. It might only appear good in builds that want to ramp up damage from standing still, but that isn't true. Often pattern patterns in boss fights, fights will simply force you to stand still. And it might not be for long, but Speed Blast doesn't need a long time to generate. So don't pigeonhole into using Speed Blast with a specific build in mind. You just try it out with no particular focus, and you'll find that it actually builds up quite quickly and can be pretty handy to interweave into your movement patterns against specific bosses. Pair it with things like turret, crystal armor, sharpshooter, it's very good. All right, closing thoughts on God Strike passives. Look, that's gonna wrap it up for our coverage on the passives within the game. If you feel like this guide helped you out or you tried a specific combo and you loved it, let us know. Inversely, if there's a particular passive setup that you're having a lot of success with and we haven't mentioned it, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening.